Okay, here we are with uh, Professor Nguyen from the Southern University of uh, Science and Technology in Shenzhen, China. And we're going to have a little talk about uh, his uh, uh, tour of conferences here in Italy, but in particular about, uh, of course, the phenomenon of the rise in uh, science, China, Chinese science fiction in the world. And um, I would like to thank you for, for being here. And uh, um, my first question is, um, given in the, in the past the science fiction in China has been influenced previously by the Soviet science fiction and later uh, by the American science fiction, um, is it now uh, that uh, China science fiction has found its own way, a third way uh, to, 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 to promote their stories or write their stories. Okay. So I I if you're getting back to the history of Chinese science fiction, not only Soviet and uh, America, you know, in the uh, last uh, and last century, you know, the first uh, science fiction uh, input in China is American science fiction. Mm -hmm. Looking backward, mm -hmm. Edward Bellamy uh -huh. and he, his work. So American is the first one to to enter enter China, and then a lot of French science fiction, George Burns' work. Right now, nearly all George Burns' work has been translated right. in China. And also the, the, the current Chinese president, many times talking about George Verne, mm -hmm. so French influence. And then in 1950s, there has a lot of Soviet science fiction being translated uh, into uh, Chinese science fiction field. That is the Soviet strong Soviet influence yes. happened there. But after the Cultural Revolution, Deng Xiaoping took power and Deng Xiaoping began to uh, open the door to the West. So at this time, uh, Isaac Asimov and uh, Robert Heinlein, uh, Arthur C. Clarke, Ray Bradbury, mm -hmm. they have a lot of American science fiction uh, entered China. So if you uh, try to know the different generations, you, you, you can find what kind of influence in their body, okay. in their works. But talking about it currently, if you are looking at um, 60s, born in 60s like me, and Liu Cixin, we're all influenced by the beginning by the Soviet, and then by the uh, States. Okay. That, that is our uh, age. Mm -hmm. but the new age, they nearly don't know uh, more about the Soviet. Only Western. Western. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean Western science fiction, but maybe you are not as <laughs> uh, grave as me. Anglophone science fiction. Anglophone. Yeah, yeah, it has strong influence in it. But uh, yes, they're familiar with that. But they try to uh, develop their own way to to write. Okay. And uh, so. Uh, these these big authors out there of all these yeah, yeah. influences. Yeah, I could give you some example. For example, Liu Cixin. What I'm thinking about, Liu Cixin uh, did a lot of research on Soviet science fiction, on the American science fiction, on Great Britain science fiction, also on the uh, Chinese science fiction. So he put all this together and to make his own works. Okay. So that is why his own works was uh, received by other uh, inside China yeah. and outside China. This is the uh, Liu Cixin's taste. But otherwise, it's not as the same. Uh, for example, Wang Jingkang. Uh, Wang Jingkang, why Wang Jingkang began to write science fiction? Because his boy, his child, wanted him to uh, tell a story. Mm -hmm. Each year, uh, sorry, each day, each night, he create a story. Oh. And that is the science fiction. But he haven't read more of other science okay. fiction at the beginning. But then within the years he began to, to, to read uh, Western. So uh, Wang Jingkang's works could be seen as a typical, I think it's a typical Chinese, Chinese. way of thinking, you know, typical Chinese ways of uh, uh, looking at the world. This is Wang Jingkang's case. And for Han Song, 
is more uh, complicated. Han Song, um, he, his major is English mm -hmm. and also the journalism. And he worked for Xinhua, Xinhua News Agency. So he either read a lot of foreign science fiction or he know a lot of um, Chinese inside, yes. inside, yes. inside the story. Yes. So he put this together. And also he paid more attention to the mainstream mm -hmm. ways of doing things. So that is why his story uh, is very strange for the for the Chinese readers. So um, lately we have been publishing this book, Nebula, in, in Italy and this is the first ever dual language science fiction anthology about uh, um, Chinese science fiction and um, uh, Professor Buyen has uh, written the, the introduction and also um, a story about uh, university and the future of uh, uh, education. Um, so my question is uh, um, contemporary uh, science fiction uh, what are the teams? Who are the people that are um, bringing new ideas to to Chinese gender? The people that were born after the 80s that okay. are young now. Okay. So uh, you know, uh, right now uh, in China, the uh, most important authors, nearly all uh, born after the 1980s, uh, we we. We choose some. Uh, you you choose. <laughs> yes, you choose some of them. Oh no, it's not only you know uh, Liu Cixin and me. Yeah. Uh, 1960s. <laughs> now I'm and, and off off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, Chen Qiu Fan and Xia Jia, I I thought is very very correct. Yeah. Chen Qiu Fan, uh, he 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 is originally he learned uh, Chinese language, Chinese literature and language. But then he mm, worked for the high tech company yeah. like uh, Google, Google and Baidu, and uh, now he created his own uh, company oh. with with other people and to do some um, business related to movie industry. Okay. Yeah, very high tech, so he familiar with the either literature or the uh, high tech aspect, uh, and also. I think he paid more attention to the um, political issues mm -hmm. of what happened in China. So his works are um, always a critical works, mm -hmm. you know, to, mm -hmm. to talking about the uh, bad, or maybe it's not bad, it's, it's a kind of a social issues, social issues. Of, of, of China. So uh, you choose him, it's very correct. I like him very much. Yeah. <laughs> and Xia Jia is just a Different. Mm -hmm. Xia Jia is a physicist uh, major, mm -hmm. and then uh, she she got the um, doctorate degree in comparative literature. So also uh, mixed with uh, two uh, different aspects. Mm -hmm. And Xia Jia is a female, a female writer. Uh, recently, the female writer is began to grow, mm -hmm. and they bring a lot of uh, female thinking. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, what I want to uh, uh, mention. Also, uh, you can find that the Hao Jingfang, uh, Ford in Beijing, is also uh, bring a very new uh, issues inside the science fiction. And Xia Jia also create uh, her own sci-fi theory. Porridge science fiction. Yes, yes <laughs> you have uh, hard and uh, soft. <laughs> she has uh, her own. <laughs> but, uh, so please uh, uh, pay attention to the. 1980s, yeah. the generation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Here it is. No. <laughs> Okay, talk it's to okay. you or talk to the Oh, uh, how how you like? It's the first time you make an interview a video. No, 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 no. <laughs> different different directors they have <laughs> yeah, different ideas. Yeah, right. <laughs>